Welcome to Irish Gage. The setup, I'm not going to really go over a whole lot. What you need to know is there are a number of shares in each of the five companies up there. We are going to be investors in these companies. We're going to be laying track for these companies out here on the map and event and hopefully paying dividends. Well, we will be paying dividends to then increase our own portfolio so that whoever has the most money at the end of the game wins. That's kind of the premise of it, all right? So what are you guys looking at here? Well, at the very, very top, you're gonna notice five containers of cubes. Those are the actual track that we're going to be laying out. We have an example set up here for the yellow company, which the yellow company is the Cork, Brandon, and South Coast Railway. Down below that, you're going to see a number of shares in each company. I say a number of shares because the companies range from two shares up to four shares a piece. So the yellow company has three shares, four for the purple, two for the orange, four for the blue, and three for the red. The difference in those does absolutely matter. Then we have the main map here, which is separated, as you can see, into hexes. There are three, essentially three different types of hexes. We have rural hexes, or plains hexes, all right. Then we have rough terrain, call it mountains or bogs or whatever you want to call it, but rough terrain, which are the darker interior ones. And then we have towns or cities or major cities. Towns don't have the large special interest cubes, so nothing in it like that. Cities have a special interest cube of either white, black, or pink. And major cities are the three cities outlined in red, okay? We have, when we draw dividends, we have where we're going to be placing those drawn dividend cubes out here, or special interest cubes. We have payout chart down here at the bottom and another kind of dividends per share, but again, none of this is final, so keep that in mind. We're playing with poker chips, because, yeah. And we have a cup full, as you can see, of dividends cubes, or special interest cubes there. And we have one uh, track or one cube of each company and we have 19 of each up in those uh, containers up there for the different companies or if they're out here as an example as well as some others for other examples. So that's what you guys are looking at. Now how do you play the game? Well the game goes until we run out of special interest cubes. We're going to be placing special interest cubes as you can see in the starting hexes out here on the board in some of these cities, as well as drawing them when we call for dividends. When we draw the last dividends cube, or the last uh, special interest cube, we finish that turn and the game ends. We then count up our cash on hand, we cash in the face value of our shares, whoever has the most money wins. All right, so what can you do on your turn? Well, in clockwise order, starting with whoever is first player, you always have four options on your turn. The first option is auction a share. Well, what does that look like? Well, if you're familiar with auctions that go around the table, this will be very familiar to you. You choose any of the top of the five companies and say, hey, I'm going to auction off that share. We'll put it out here somewhere on the board so you guys can see it. And the starting bid is the large number. Now, Ariel, if you'll grab that top one off, you'll notice that the second share, the large number then becomes the 12, and the one below that then would be the 17. That is the face value of that share. That is also the minimum bid. If you choose to put a share up for auction, you must have that cash on hand. There are no loans in this game. Go around clockwise around the board. If you pass, you're out. Otherwise, highest bidder pays it to the bank, takes the share. Pretty simple. That's auction and share. Obviously, if that company is sold out, you cannot auction off any more shares of that company. Any questions about auctioning a share? All right, cool. Next, placing railway track. Well, let me draw your attention to the chart up here. The chart there shows the, the terrain cost. Now, whenever you say you're going to lay track or build railway or lay track for a company, however you want to word that, you get three points of track building available. What do the three points of track associate to? Well, right here, this chart. In these rural hexes, you're allowed to place cubes as such. If, 
for yellow, it must always lead back to its home hex. So I could build out this way if I wanted, et cetera, et cetera, something like here. And then I could build out this way, however I want to do that, right? Mm -hmm. But you'll notice you only have three points of track. Well, to lay in one of these is cost of one of those build points. So one, two, and three, and yellow's done. So if I did that on my turn, that's it. The catch here is you must be an investor of that company. You must be a shareholder to lay track in that company. When you say you're going to lay track, you cannot split it between companies that you are shareholders. Uh, one point for this company and maybe one point or two points for purple, something like that. You cannot. It's all or nothing with one company that you are invested in. Okay. So that is for regular hexes. For difficult terrain, so if I wanted to build up here, for whatever reason, you'll notice that costs two of my build points. So I could build something like that and that, and I'm done because that's three build points. Easy enough. You'll notice towns, cities, and major cities all cost one. All right, so let's say I had previously done something along the lines of that on a previous turn. I then could build one, two, and if you'll hand me one more, three, easy enough for another turn. So now I've branched into more cities. Easy enough. However, you'll notice that there is an occupied column as well. So if purple then wanted to lay some track, purple, if they wanted to lay into this occupied rural hex, you'll notice that that will cost one and a half. Uh oh, we're getting into fractions and decimals now. Well, pretty simple one and a half. That'd be three total. Done. So it doesn't go as far. However, if yellow, for whatever reason, chose to do this because they were tired and hadn't slept, then if purple wanted to do this, they cannot. You'll notice the not available. Why? Difficult hexes are difficult and only one company can do that. So in other words, maybe purple does something like that would be one, that would be two. They would love to be able to lay that there, but that would be three and a half. They cannot, so instead they come there problem solved. Mm -hmm. Whereas if they chose to do something like that, maybe on a later turn, they were building other track and they later chose to come up here. Well, that would cost them one and a half. Same with going into a city or a town or a major city. Any questions on laying track? Pretty, pretty self-explanatory, I think, past that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Your third option is placing a special interest cube. How does that work? Well, we literally are going to have something along the lines of this out here. You'll notice that the special interests come in three different colors. Neapolitan, chocolate, <laughs> vanilla, and strawberry, all right? To be able to place a special interest cube, you must be a shareholder for, of a company that is in that town. So in other words, nobody can uh, place here in Castle Bar because no, there is no company already there that is laid track. If I am not a yellow stockholder, I cannot place a special interest cube in New Ross, but let's say I am. So what color do I wanna choose? Well, I look at all these. This is open information. I look at what, you know, I say, you know, there's a lot of pink in there. So you know what? We're gonna choose pink and go there. I could easily choose white or black as well. And when you place it there, done. That is your entire turn, placing one special interest cube. You might be asking yourself, self, why would I want to place a special interest cube? Well, glad you asked, because that is our fourth option. If somebody calls for dividends, dividends, we then put all of them in here. We give them a shake. You guys at home can see it. We cannot. We are then going to draw out three cubes from in here at random. One, two, and... Drum roll. Awesome. Glad you did that. Thank you. <laughs> One, two, and three. That is drawing for dividends for the payouts. So how does this work? Dividends are going to be paid out one time and one time only every time somebody calls, uh, calls for dividends. I don't care that there are two white uh, special interest cubes drawn. It's still only going to pay out one time. So how do payouts work? Well, we take a look at this. Anywhere, a, actually looking at this, mm -hmm. a city or major city that whose special interest cube was drawn will pay out $4 for each of those hexes. Each town 
that has that company and it will pay out too. So let me give some examples and let's take a look here. Um, yeah, actually this is a really good example for yellow and purple. Every company will pay dividends starting left to right. So we start with yellow. White and black dividend, uh, I'm sorry, special interests were drawn. Well, you'll notice yellow is not in any white special interest cities, correct? Correct. Yeah. All right, we have black and we have pink. Well. $4 for each of the black hexes. So yellow is paying four, eight, zero, because there was no pink drawn, zero, because there was no pink drawn, two, because it's a town. So it'd be four, eight, ten dollars per share. If I am the only shareholder of yellow, I get 10 bucks. If there are two shares out, divide by two, five bucks a piece. If there are three, we then look at the little handy dandy chart, three here at $4, so it rounds up four bucks a piece from the bank, mm -hmm. paid to all shareholders. Then we would move on to purple. Purple here, there is a black cube, so that'd be four, and they're not anywhere else, $4 total divided by the shareholders. Then we would finish that all the way through. That's calling for dividends, pretty simple. Then after we've done so, we'll go ahead and pour these back out so everybody can see what is left. And then whenever somebody calls for dividends again, we'll throw them back in there, draw. The game ends when all of the special interest cubes have been drawn and mm -hmm. are out of here on the board, either through paying of dividends or placing into towns to create cities. Whoever has the biggest portfolio wins. And a reminder what that is, cash on hand. So when you're bidding when you're in the auction, you're bidding for points, essentially. But also, show those, Ariel, again. The face value of those companies or of those shares is how much you're going to cash those in for, 7, 12, or 17, respectively. So if you buy the third share, yes, you're getting $17, whereas the person who bought the first share would only cash theirs in for $7, even though you will have gotten dividends throughout the game, yada, yada, yada. And that, folks, is how you play Irish Gage. Any questions? Good. All right.